the government for years has hidden behind the constitution. It's hidden its class interest, the class interest of those it represents behind the constitution or has attempted to do so. It's avoided taking action that would resolve the housing crisis but hurt the profits of those who benefit from the housing crisis because it represents those who benefit. The developers, the speculators, the cuckoo funds, the corporate landlords, etc. But instead of coming out and saying, well, actually, this is the class that we represent and we're not going to implement measures that will hurt them, instead the government has repeatedly said, no, we, we, we kind of, we'd like to do what needs to be done, but we can't because of the constitution. Rent controls, constitution says no. Eviction ban, constitution says no. Rent freeze, constitution says no. I don't believe it. It's some coincidence that the limits of the constitution always seem to be just as far as the government is willing to go and no further. Very coincidental and very convenient for uh, the government. Um, and when under pressure, under massive pressure with COVID, then the government finds a way and all of a sudden it is constitutional because of COVID to have an eviction ban and to have a rent freeze. But now that COVID is hopefully coming towards an end, we're back to normality and all of these things are simply unconstitutional uh, again. Like I said, I, I don't believe it. I think it is class interest that is at play here. Yes, that class interest is reflected in the kind of constitution that we have, but the government hides behind it. There is no hiding anymore. If you actually are in favor of taking measures to ensure that renters are able to rent at an affordable rate, if you're actually interested in tackling homelessness, well then you would not only allow this bill to pass second stage, you would allow a referendum to happen and allow people to vote overwhelmingly to enshrine the right to housing in the constitution and to mean there can be no such perceived or imagined or invented obstacle to doing what is necessary in the future. We understand that the government is saying they will allow it to pass second stage. Great. But we don't consider that a victory yet, and we would say that to people outside who are watching. We think it's a maneuver by the government to avoid openly opposing it in order instead to bring it into committee and then drag it out and then presumably, and we might get a hint of this for the minister's speech today, presumably replace it with a watered down wording that won't actually make a difference for people. And I send a warning to the government, don't try to kill this bill and this referendum in that way. Don't try to water this down because if you do, you will be facing with very significant movements of protest. You can see it already emerging, housing as the key political issue, and people are going to mobilize in their thousands and tens of thousands on this issue um, in the autumn time. The government is under massive pressure in relation to housing. That is, that's clear, it's reflected in the fact that they're going to allow it to pass second stage now when they didn't in 2017. It was reflected in the fact that under pressure, the issue that you didn't even know existed about the 8% rent increases for many renters. You didn't know existed because you're out of touch with renters, but this week under pressure you move to say, well, we're going to deal with it. Well, we need to see the details of how you're going to deal with it to ensure that there will be no such rent increases of more than 4%. I mean, and again, we'll be campaigning for rent controls to bring them down. But even in terms of dealing with this situation, that nobody is left out of those protections. We need to see the details. The final point I just want to finish on is a, is a point about the far right in this country. The far right have been trying to capitalize on the fears of people around COVID. And they will, they're going to try to build on that in the aftermath of COVID, and they'll try to take up the issue of housing. And they'll try to point the blame for the issue of housing, particularly at immigrants, and say they're the people uh, to blame rather than the capitalist free market system within housing. But I, I would point to people that elements of the far right have shown their true colors. They're campaigning against this bill because they say wrongly that the bill will mean the government can be able to take ordinary people's homes. Obviously, it does no such thing, but it does reveal 
their true colours, that ultimately they're not on the side of working class people that they claim to represent because they're also not willing to challenge the free market system. They defend that system and they defend those who benefit from it. I think Deputy Smith is now speaking. Deputy